Hot Stove Cast. Here is the Hot Stove host. Hello and welcome to the Hot Stove Cast. I'm the Hot Stove host, Zach Simon. Thank you so much for joining me here on the Hot Stove Cast, episode 112, the 12th episode of the first season. Fantastic show lined up for you today. Corbin Joseph, double A second baseman for the Bowie Bay Sox. Brother of Caleb Joseph is a member of the Baltimore Orioles organization. Really cool interview because not only does Corbin Joseph have major league experience, both with the Yankees and Orioles, he also played on the same field as his brother Caleb. So you'll get to hear all about that and his background and such. Adam Pohl, broadcaster for the Bowie Bay Sox, joins the show as well. I stopped at Dunkin' Donuts Park in Hartford, the home of the Yard Goats, for an amazing experience. Uh, Ballpark Chowdown visited there. Bear Smokehouse Barbecue. Uh, for the best stadium food I've had, period. Uh, so far, I visited seven parks, and this, this barbecue was off the charts. Um, it was so cool being there. I got to hang out with some goats at the stadium. Check out my Twitter page uh, to see me in a pennant full of goats. Uh, but really fun episode ahead, including a Korean baseball home run call, uh, the food fight by the St. Paul Saints, and just so much more. Wild pitch, um, what's cooking has a, is fun today. And uh, yeah, so just a really awesome episode ahead. Let's just dive right into it. And by the way, before I get to that, please hit that red subscribe button on YouTube or subscribe on iTunes or Overwatch or whatever podcast medium you are on. And of course, thank you for listening. But without further ado, it is now time for Wild Pitch. Just a bit outside. By the way, MLB Players Weekend is coming up next weekend, so peep my last episode to hear about those names. Um, But let's get into wild pitch. David Bodie stepped up to the plate against the Washington Nationals. Down three, bases loaded, 2-2 count, bottom nine, two outs. In a moment that every single kid who ever grew up playing baseball dreamed of, and he did not disappoint. He launched a home run to center field to hoist the Cubs to a 4 Three victory in absolutely stunning and dramatic fashion. And I have the Korean baseball call right here. Absolutely amazing. David Bodie living that moment everybody ever dreamed of. Probably the best finish to a game uh, this year. I don't know if anybody else is going to top that. I mean, that again, that's the moment every kid dreamed of. Uh, at least in the regular season, I think David Bodie locked that up. Um, but yeah, tough sailing for the Nationals. The Nationals, the ne- very next night, didn't have much luck either. They're in St. Louis. They have a 4-3 lead. Boom, they give up a three-run home run to Matt Carpenter. Uh, what I was... What I believe is his 33rd of the year. He's killing it. Uh, they score two more to tie the game. Game goes to the bottom of the ninth, and Paul DeYoung steps up to the plate. 3 1 pitch to a guy with power. So in case you didn't figure that out, that was the Nationals <laughs> TV call. Uh, I cannot think in my lifetime, really, of a more tough two-game stretch uh, for a Major League Baseball team, at least in the regular season. I mean, let's let's stick to the regular season. That is ridiculous bad luck. Um, wow. I, I mean, honestly, I, I when I saw that all ta- tra- transpire, I thought to myself, the Nationals are done. I mean, they cannot possibly recover from that. That's the kind of thing that just puts the nail in the season and an otherwise underwhelming season for the Nationals. But the NL playoff picture is very tight. You don't know. Uh, you don't know for sure. Uh, but let's move on here, keeping it Nationals. So Reddit, a very popular site, um, kind of different site. You should Google it sometime. It's you know, it's kind of tailored to whatever themes people like. But anyway, there's an R Nationals page, a, a national subreddit. And because literally the following night from this uh, Matt Carpenter, Paul DeYoung, whopper of a loss 
The site turned into our nationals, as in our nationals park, where people just started talking about their favorite national parks, which parks to go to, which parks to avoid, the beauty of national parks. And, and what is hilarious? Now, there were fans lamenting, oh, you know, there are, no, you should talk to me when you're in the, in the third to last place in the league. No, you know what? Nationals fans, have your way, because to lose games in those fashion, consecutive, you know, God bless. Uh, also hilarious that that that's so bright it uh, turned into that. Um, moving on here, keeping it in the National League East, Perry Hill, uh, Marlins first base coach, he puts a wet piece of lettuce in his helmet to stay cool. Uh, he says cabbage is is better uh, than lettuce, so he he rolls with the cabbage. God knows if it works, but I'll tell you what, it does look refreshing. I've heard of. I don't know. I've heard of people like putting onions in their feet when they sleep to like remove odor, which like that just doesn't sound like it works at all. But, you know, vegetables have superpowers. So who the heck knows if this stuff works or not? Moving on here. Speaking of food, the St. Paul Saints celebrated the 40th anniversary of one of my favorite films, Food Fights, uh, Animal House. Okay, Animal. it was Animal House's 40th anniversary, obviously. So they had a food fight of their own. So picture this scene. Okay, 7,000 fans all in blue ponchos, throwing mashed potatoes, marshmallows, popcorn, and powdered donuts at one another. You know, they were allowed to throw any other food that they purchased there. That was the comp food, what I just mentioned. But they also, they, they could not douse each other with beverages or, or throw anything that could burn people. Um, and I've got the audio from that experience right here. And brings us to the food fight. And we'll stick it here. Keep an eye on the screen and get your food ready. Remember, keep it off the field. I'm a zit. Get in here. Now, food fight! Food fight now, over! That was unbelievable. How do you come back from that now? Now, obviously, that was a little condensed. Um, imagine showing up to that game and not even knowing that was going to take place. Uh, they did have a safe zone, by the way, for fans who, you know, had expensive bags or whatever. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't all for naught. The, the Saints asked fans to bring non-perishable items to be donated to, to a daytime center that services underprivileged and homeless youth in the area. They also encouraged donations, uh, for the same cause that reached $3,000. So before you get all up in arms about the wasting of food here, take this promotion with a grain of salt. Uh, I wish I could have been there. That was really special. Um, moving on here to also weird stuff in baseball. Uh, baseballreference.com. When you search fart, and I'm going to spoil this for you because you're probably going to Google it anyway. But when you search fart in the, in the search bar on baseballreference.com, you get a picture of a bar of soap alongside a picture with an open mouth. So I don't know how somebody finds that. I don't know who's bored. I, I, I frankly don't know what you have to be on to... <laughs> to think, yeah, I'm going to search fart on baseballreference.com, but somebody did, and I found that, and uh, more, more power to him, but with mouths in mind, okay, Noah Syndergaard uh, was asked on the ESPN broadcast how he's looking forward to the Little League Classic on Sunday, and the quote was, well, he's he's a funny guy, so Noah Syndergaard brings it every time, he, he does not disappoint on and off the mound, the quote was, quote, hopefully none of these kids have hand, foot, and mouth, end quote, <laughs> Not even remotely surprising. Uh, but speaking of weird injuries, baseball is full of weird injuries. So many. Joel Zumaya straining his wrist in Guitar Hero. Sammy two sneezes. Sosa goes to the DL with back spasms. Uh, Ricky Henderson missed three games falling asleep with an ice pack on his foot, and he got frostbite. By the way, you're not playing Guitar Hero if you don't strain your wrist. Just saying. But speaking of weird injuries, a few more to add to the ledger here. Luke Weaver was scratched from his start after cutting his finger on aluminum foil. Uh, the Dodgers had a pair of weird injuries. Uh, Brian Dozier said Zyrtec triggered his dizziness. He had to miss a he had to miss a game. And uh, Ross Stripling said soft beds at the Ritz Carlton hampered his back. He's now on the disabled list. Uh, so baseball baseball's a weird game, man. You know, people might associate baseball players with being soft, but you know what? 162 game season is a very long season. It can be up to like 183 days, I believe, and that's a long time to be an athlete. Uh, so. You know, this stuff happens, but speaking of pro ball players, Corbin Joseph does have big league reps, and he was kind enough to join my show right here. 
Joining the Hot Stove cast is a 2008 New York Yankees fourth-round draft pick. He's now a prospect in the Baltimore Orioles organization with the AA Bowie Bay Sox. He's a second baseman. Corbin Joseph is kind enough to give me a few minutes of his time. Corbin, thanks so much for your time. How are you doing? Yeah, doing very good. Thanks for having me. It's fantastic to have you. Now, Corbin, you actually got your first Major League hit off Trevor Bauer, who's doing fantastic things right now, uh, in 2013. Take me into that moment. Uh, you know, me and uh, me and Bauer that year faced off a couple of times, and uh, you know, uh, you know, going through the minor leagues together. Um, so you know, I kind of had an idea of how he was going to pitch me, and uh, you know, I want to remember, uh, you know, previous at bats he was starting me out with the first pitch changeup, and uh, so I think on my third at bat, um, you know, I just kind of sat on that pitch, and uh, you know, he left it up, good pitch to hit, and uh, was lucky enough to drive it to left center, and uh, you know, get an extra base hit. Corbin, you were in the bigs this year for a brief stint with the Orioles. Uh, manager Buck Showalter said, "Quote: Corbin presented himself well, and we'll let him to continue out, and we'll let him continue to with to with what's a really good season in Bowie." Uh, but we have some guys right now who are a little more versatile. What are you? So I noticed you played some first base, second base, DH. Uh, you played more than a thousand games between the minors and the majors. Uh, what are you doing to become more versatile? You know, I think just trying to get comfortable at other positions. You know, I'm, I'm taking a lot of ground balls at third base, uh, you know, taking ground balls at second, you know, just kind of continuing my work there, taking ground balls at first. Uh, you know, every now and then I'll take some, some fly balls and left and, you know, to really make those throws to uh, second and home. And, uh, you know, I think that that's half the battle, just kind of getting comfortable, you know, and, uh, you know, taking those reps there, just uh, just trying to relax. And, you know, it's a little bit longer throws at each position. And, you know, you got to be in uh, different situations on uh, cuts and relays and stuff, just trying to really just kind of get ahead of the curve of, uh, you know, where you need to be in case uh, you get put in a situation. All right, let's talk about a little more versatility, but this time at the dish, okay? So at the plate, you have a do you read fan graphs at all, by the way? No, I, I do not, no. Okay. Are you familiar with, like, Moneyball and all that? Or? Yeah, I, I have watched the show. So, you know, I have an idea of what, you know, what, what they, I guess, gather information and stuff like that. Right, it's a lot of info. So I mentioned that because at the plate you have a 49.6 pull percentage. So you're hitting basically 50% of, the, of your balls to um, uh, right field, mm-hmm. um, which is 29th out of 157 qualifiers, okay? Um, are you actively trying to improve hitting the ball to all fields, speaking of versatility? Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, that that's the difference in, uh, in this year. You know, I've, I've, I feel pretty comfortable going to all uh, left to right, you know, and uh, uh, this year I just really challenged myself to uh, to get the pitch that, that I'm looking for and really try and drive the baseball and, uh, you know, get the barrel out and try and make good contact, uh, and uh, and as a result, you know, I have a, quite a bit of doubles, and you know, power's gone up a lot. So, um, you know, just trying to uh, improve a, a part of my game that that necessarily, you know, I I felt like I could improve there, and uh, you know, it's worked out so far. You have a career best 503 slugging percentage. Talking with Bowie Bay Sox second baseman uh, Corbin Joseph. Corbin, now you are the brother of Caleb Joseph, and we will get to that, but we're talking about Corbin Joseph right now. Now, I mentioned Caleb because I have a quote uh, from Caleb about you. Uh, quote, one time we were playing around and I smashed his fingers in the door, Caleb said. Um, I'm running downstairs and he jumps over the staircase and jumps on top of me and bites me in the back. And I knew... This kid is a fierce kid. He's never going to give up. And by goodness, he didn't do it. He didn't give up. He's been that way his whole life. He's a real fighter. Okay. Um, end quote. What's your mentality at the plate? Uh, you know, I, I try not to, to give away at bats. You know, uh, when you first get drafted, you know, you, you uh, go through a lot of coaches, you know, in the sense of, you know, high A, low A, you know, early in your career. And uh, I was blessed enough with the Yankees to have a lot of coaches to really push me um, as far as, the mentality side of the game and, uh, you know, just uh, mentally not, not giving up, mentally, you know, really challenging yourself, not only at your bats, your, the way you play the game, how hard you play the game, and, uh, you know, really taking it personal. And so um, when I step in the box, um, you know, if, if I'm 0 for 12 or 0 for 15, you know, in my head, you know, I'm, I'm 15 for 15. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to give up at bats. Um, you know, I definitely don't want to strike out. Um, just trying to put together a good bat for the team and, uh, you know, do something positive. Talking with Corbin Joseph, Bowie Bay Sox, second baseman. Corbin, I want to play a little game with you. It's yeah. player A, player B. You ready? Yeah. Uh, one is in double A and one is in the majors. Mm-hmm. Uh, player A, or, or uh, player, let's start with player B. Player B is uh, hitting 310. He's got a 396 on base. He's got a 462 slugging, eight homers, walks 12.6% of the time, uh, strikes out 12.4% of the time, and uh, has a whiff rate of 
uh, percent. Now, whiff rate is swings and misses, um, not like foul balls, but swings and misses, okay? okay. Uh, it's called swing strike percentage. But anyway, player A, okay, is 310, 380 on base, 503 slug, 10.1 walks uh, per nine, 8.5 strikeouts per nine, 4.9 swing strike percentage. Who do you think player A is? Who do you think player B is? Ooh. Uh, I think probably player A is probably the double A player, and then player B is the big league player. Do you have any guesses as to who they could be? Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. I'm sitting next to one of them. Okay. All right. So probably player A is probably me. You're, you would be correct. All right, and then I have no idea who player B would be. That's okay. Uh, there is a hint. That might give this away. This player actually, I believe, grew up in the same town as you. Okay. He yeah. is a big leaguer. Mookie Betts. No. No? Uh, let's see. I think he went to your high school. Went to the same high school. Hmm. Actually, no, he did not go to your high school, but he definitely grew up in the same town. Okay. Um, Tony Kemp? No. No? Want to keep trying? I give up. Okay. Yeah. Ben Zobrist. Okay, yeah, Ben Zobrist. Yes. Yeah, okay, very good. Um, I, I understand. Do you talk to Ben Zobrist? Like, d- yeah, we've, we've uh, you know, my brother's really close with him. Right. And uh, one year one year I worked out with him on uh, the off season, and got a lot of knowledge from him. Great guy. And, uh, you know, a switch hitter can can absolutely hit from both sides. Um, just a, I like what I like to call a grinder. I mean, he just uh, he plays the game hard, plays – great all over the uh, all over the field um you can put him anywhere and uh you know i i, I always call him mr clutch because it seems like every time he comes up to the plate you know like in the world series with the cubs like just battling gets a good pitch drives a guy in you know it's just a silent cl- clutch guy you know just uh just a great ball player all around plays all over the diamond is he's got a super respectable bat oh, yeah. and uh i was i was really struck by the the similarities like you're literally hitting the same percent um between your line and his line now, you know, double-A managers. But still, it's, it's very similar. But I must say, that swing strike rate I mentioned, uh, yours is 4.9. It's very low. That's second uh, in all of the Eastern League with a minimum of 500, uh, excuse me, 150 uh, plate appearances. But um, let's, let's switch gears a little bit here, okay? Um, uh, you, you said you, you sort of talked to Ben Zobers a little bit. I understand you like to hunt. Um, uh, what's your ideal day hunting? Ideal day of hunting, ah, man, I, I enjoy uh, waterfowl hunting, um, you know, just uh, being able to communicate with an animal and, and trick them into uh, believing that you're, you're real is just something that I've, I've fallen in love with. I used to be a big deer hunter, and then uh, in 13, I had labrum surgery on my shoulder, and, uh, you know, so I, I had put that, you know, I, I put that aside and, and made a commitment to uh, not, not bow hunting until, um, you know, my career is over, so... Um, really focused on the waterfowl hunting. Uh, love bird, love dove hunting, bird hunting, any type of bird hunting. Um, but really, just uh, you know, sick over the waterfowl stuff. I, I love it. It's fantastic. Um, do you ever hunt with your brother at all? I do. You know, he uh, <laughs> he's got a lot of stuff. You know, in the off season that he does, um, as far as he he follows the natural predators pretty hard. Um, you know, he, he plays in a band, and you know, it seems like he's always doing something every weekend. So whenever we can get him out. Uh, you know, me and my cousin and my brother always, uh, we, do, we try and go hunting a couple times a year, and, uh, you know, we, we always enjoy each other's company. I mentioned this hunting, well, for one of many reasons, I just didn't like it, but a Zobrist, and, and I had this guy, you ever hear of Derek Hall? Probably not, but. No. Okay, he's, uh, he was on the show a couple episodes, uh, episodes ago, he's a, he's a Phillies double-A prospect with uh, Redding, and I mentioned this because um, he went to, he's a big hunter, mm-hmm. like, he, we, he went on and on about hunting, yeah. and uh, he went to the same college as Ben Zobrist, oh, okay. so there, you know, there could be a potential yeah. hunt meetup, you yeah. never know, yeah. uh, but I just want to mention that. All right, so I understand, by looking at your Twitter, uh, is at Joseph underscore Corbin. Um, I understand you like Duck Dynasty. Yeah. Uh, what's your guilty pleasure TV show? I mean, you know, honestly, I, I, I try and stay off, the, you know, TV. Um, I just like watching kind of movies on uh, on TV, you know, that, that uh, you know, that are on in the hotel or whatnot. Um, you know, watch ESPN, get get updates and whatnot. But, uh, you know, when, I, when I'm at home, I'm really just trying to spend time with the family and, uh, you know, really just trying to get, get off the, you know, social media, the TV stuff. And I, a lot of that... That stuff, I think, you know, just kind of locks you in, and uh, you know, you just kind of you, you waste waste time, and uh, you know, I, I feel like being away from my family for you know six, seven, eight months out of the year, um, you know, not consistently seeing them, it, it's uh, it's not fair to them. So, 
you know, a guilty TV show. I mean, I, I watched The Blacklist with my wife. You know, that's kind of her, her uh, one of her shows that she likes to watch. So we, we spend time together watching that show together. Okay. But you have a family. You have two amazing daughters. In what ways has have your daughters really helped propel you as far as your development goes in, in uh, the minors? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, when, when you're... Um, you know like what I explained to, to Adam earlier this year in an in a interview. You know when you're single and you're you're in this lifestyle. I mean you can you can kind of get eat up with the the failure. Um, you know just when you fail seven times out of ten. You know I mean that that's tough to deal with. And and you're still doing great. You know you're you're hitting 300. Everything's good, but you're still failing seven times out of ten. Um, you know and and so I think the biggest thing for me personally is. Uh, you know, having a family that that loves you no matter what, you know, and having two girls that they don't they don't know what's going on. They they think you did great if you you go for three or three strikeouts. You know, they they uh, they have that. You know, they they don't know what results you know that you're looking for, but they love you no matter what. So walking out of the doors of the locker room, you're able to just kind of let go of the negativity, and uh, there's a bigger purpose there of being a dad, you know, as opposed to what happened, you know. So, Something so small within the game that, that you learn to not have to deal with. It's awesome. Talking with Bowie Bay Sox, second baseman Corbin Joseph. Corbin, I want to go back to your Twitter real fast. Uh, it's at Joseph Corbin. Um, you follow Ford trucks on Twitter, okay? Yep. Do you drive a Ford? What's your ideal truck? Is it a Ram 1500 Hemi V8 or, or what is it? No, I, uh, I have a, uh, an F-150 right now. Um, love Ford trucks. I, I think they're dependable and uh, my ideal Ideal uh, truck would be a, a 250 or a 350, uh, just because I drive a lot, you know, pulling uh, trailers and stuff for duck hunting, and um, you know, it would uh, it would be a lot better pulling it with a diesel as opposed to a gas engine. But you know, I'm happy with it. Uh, you know, uh, just I used to have a Chevy and it it broke down, so that's that's why I moved <laughs> to Ford and uh, haven't looked back. I love how you call it dependable. I'm pretty sure that's literally the slogan. Yeah. Um, but anyway, um, I heard you always wanted to be a basketball player. Mm-hmm. Why and, and what inspired that? Man, I just, uh, in, in middle school and, and uh, even uh, my first year of uh, high school, I, I played basketball. And I think growing up, my uncle was the uh, head basketball coach of Franklin High School for uh, many years. And I just remember, you know, going to basketball games and, you know, being the water boy or the towel boy or something like that, just being involved and. Um, man, I just loved it. I just, I just loved the uh, the competitive side of it, uh, being able to compete, you know, and and be physical, and um, you know, it it was just something that, growing up and and learning so much with uh, with my uncle, coaching, you know, and and going to the camps and stuff. I just, I, I fell in love with basketball. It just, you know, it ended up not working out. You know, I never got the growth spurt that my brother did, and uh, you know, so. You know, when it all comes down to it, you got to kind of pick and choose baseball or basketball. And uh, I felt like, uh, you know, I had a better chance at, at baseball, so I had to, you know, hang up the basketball shoes. So you're, you, let's talk a little bit about Tennessee. You're from Franklin, Tennessee, right? Yep, that's right. Okay, great. So you mentioned the Preds earlier, uh, your brother's a fan. Yep. Um, How would you feel? Are you a fan of the Preds? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I go watch, I'm not as big of a fan as Caleb is, but, uh, you know, I watch the transactions and stuff, and a lot of the times um, it's uh, – you know, I watch the games and I follow it in the playoff runs and everything like that. And go to a couple games a year, but um, not you know he he's going to like every game. You know, <laughs> and any game he can go to, he's going. And uh, you know, I go to probably two a year and uh, you know cheer him on and enjoy the game and you know and so slowly getting into it more and more each year. They play a great brand of hockey. It's not like new school, but it's not old school. It's a little rebellious in that regard. Uh, Pecorino is like the best goalie in the game. Philip Forsberg's fantastic. Um, but I, I have to ask you, how'd you feel about the Shea Weber trade? He's like my favorite defender. How'd you feel about it? Yeah, you know, it was. Uh, I know it, it was. It was good for the future, you know. And and I think in in the moment, there's a lot of people that were upset. But you know, as you look on to the future, it was uh, it was something that needed to happen. Okay, moving on here with Corbin Joseph, second baseman for the Bowie Bay Sox. Corbin, Cal Turner Jr., are you familiar with uh, Cal Turner Jr.? Mm. He's a billionaire heir. He's the former CEO of Dollar General, like the dollar store you see everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, if you could run any company you want, which company would it be and why? Ooh, uh, I would probably want to run an outdoor company, um, you know, something along the lines of, uh, you know, like a, a decoy company or, you know, a camouflage pattern, something like that, like Realtree. Um, just because you you can you can be in the outdoor industry and uh, you know be able to hunt and and also 
you know, just just being that that hunting industry throughout the whole year. Okay, let's keep it Tennessee. Okay. You're gonna make your own barbecue sampler, Corbin. Yeah. You get three mains and two sides. Okay. What do you got? Ooh, um, I'd say uh, I'd probably go with uh, some smoked brisket, um, and uh, some pulled pork, and then uh, green beans, corn, and mashed potatoes. Oh, that'd man. be my ideal plate right there. Oh, oh man, I'm getting hungry. I have not eaten today. Anyway, um, yeah, whatever. Uh, okay, let's let's move on here. You've had an interesting career. A lot of baseball experience. Mentioned you played like over a thousand games. You've played in Staten Island, Tampa, Trenton. And this is excluding like all the away games, right? But anyway, you played uh, T- Trenton, Scranton, Mississippi, Norfolk, and now Bowie. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, New York, Baltimore too, obviously. Uh, but which of your minor league baseball, um, you know, ex- situations, if you will, has been most impactful on your development as a baseball player and a person? Okay, um, I'll say, um, you know, coming up with the Yankees. Um, you know, grinding through that system, uh, you know, the getting up to Scranton, the, the AAA team, when we, we played on the road um, the whole year uh, when they were redoing the stadium, and I believe it was 12, 2012. And, uh, you know, that was that was just tough in the sense of, you know, a different, a different style of, you know, having to play constantly on the road. And then the next year after that, you know, that that park is tough to play in. Um, it's tough to see with all the, the the rocks they put out in center field. And so, in fourteen, probably my most impactful year, I would say, is probably fourteen when I wasn't starting every day and I was playing once every five, ten, ten days. Um, you know, just kind of coming off shoulder surgery. You know, and and to actually for the first time in my career not not be a starter. Um, it was it was tough mentally. Um, it was tough. Uh, to uh, to figure out what what's your routine now, you know, and uh, and to to be able to figure out um, to figure out the uh, the uh, the way to handle um, you know how how to go about your business with, with only playing once every five six seven days, um, you know, and then uh, but also being a good teammate, you know, and uh, knowing knowing that you know my my time, you know, and, and with the Yankees is kind of. Certain, you know, you you constantly have to have the flow of players, and uh, and at that time, you know, you had Rob Resnider and and Jose Perella who are were in the big leagues, you know, this year, um, and uh, you know they they were coming up and um, you know kind of giving them a shot, and they did great, and uh, but the the mental side of it made me made me so strong, and uh, you know really just uh, I learned how to be a player off a bench, and I think that's uh, that's so valuable in a sense of. If I make it to the big leagues, uh, you know, and I'm playing a full year, I'm not going to be a starter, you know. So that's that type of mentality that I felt like it, it prepared me to, um, you know, to prepare me for for an actually being in what what my purpose would be on a big league club, and that's kind of a utility, not everyday player, um, and and I think that that's what impacted me the most. A lot of learning for Corbin Joseph, second baseman. Well, he's in every. I don't want to call him an everyman, but he kind of is. Uh, second baseman for the Bowie Bay Sox. Um, so, uh, Corbin, talk about influences, uh, experiences, etc. Uh, who's your biggest baseball influence? I'd, I'd probably say, I mean, my whole family. I mean, it, it, it can't really rely on one person. I mean, I, I have a lot of people that are, uh, you know, that have been there for me in, in the good times, the bad times, and, you know, my, my parents, my grandparents, my mother-in-law, father-in-law, um, uh, my wife, you know, and uh, you, know, you can't really label it on one person. I mean, my middle school coaches, high school coaches, I mean, a, a lot of a lot of good fan base that, uh, you know, and, and family and close friends that have really encouraged me throughout my whole career. Are there any current players' games you try to emulate? Um, you know, I, I always enjoy watching Robinson Cano swing. You know, coming up with him uh, – throughout the Yankees organization and seeing him, you know, in spring training and, and you know, being, sitting next to him at a locker, you know, and just kind of picking his mind, picking his brain, but just how calm he is at the plate, you know, and, um, you know, he's just, he's got a fluid swing and it's, uh, it's picture perfect and, you know, it, uh, it's something that I've always, always uh, enjoyed watching. Speaking with second baseman for the Bowie Bay Sox, Orioles prospect, Corbin Joseph. Corbin, I told you we get to Caleb, we're here. <laughs> Tell me how having an older brother in the bigs has helped your progress. Oh, it's 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 amazing. I mean, it's uh, it's it's really cool just to you know 
talk about each individual has their own story in the minor leagues and and their own grind and uh, you have to embrace it and uh, you know and Caleb he played five years in double A I mean he, he talk about a grind I mean he was here for five years in the same spot that I'm in so um, you have to watch him make it and uh, you know to watch him uh, play on on the big screen you know it's uh it's pretty cool it's it's a lot of fun being able to uh, you know call him up ask him how he's doing and uh, you know continue to encourage him and um, you know help him with uh, you know if I see something with the swing or just kind of bouncing ideas off each other uh, you know it's something we've always done and uh, you know it's it's uh, it's a lot of fun watching him play. What does it mean to you to be the first brothers to suit up for the Orioles since Cal Jr. and Bill Ripken? It was a lot of fun. You know, it was uh, it was something that was uh, extremely special. We always talked about it uh, coming up through the minor leagues, like how cool would it be and it's a possibility. And, uh, you know, to act for it actually to happen was just, you know, I think it was kind of surreal at the in the moment. You know, it, it didn't, I don't think it really hit us. You know, it kind of, you know, was, uh, you know, this is kind of different and then all of a sudden bam you know we're in the game and it's a it's a heated game and you know I get pinch hit right behind him which was crazy I was kind of just sitting there like you know I'm, I'm about to hit behind my brother in a big league game like it's just it's nuts so um you know it's a lot of fun um something that I'll you know forever cherish and uh you know I'll never forget unbelievable um I can't even imagine um Okay, so we're beginning to wrap up here with uh, Corbin Joseph Corbin. So in 2008, you were the fourth-round uh, draft pick by the New York Yankees. Mm-hmm. Your brother was the seventh-round draft mm-hmm. pick. You ever, like – now, I understand your brother has more major league reps so far. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you, you ever, like, nudge him a little bit and be like, hey, hey Caleb, you remember that 2008 draft? Remember what – I don't remember what round you were in. You, you, ever, you ever – no? No, not really. I mean, you know, but, but you know, there, there's there been a couple times where it's like, yeah, you know, but I, I made it to the big leagues first, so, you know, right. that that kind of conversation. But, no, nah, he's he's had a great career. He's really worked worked his tail off. And, um, you know, like I said, he's, he's got a couple of years on me in the big leagues, so – you know, you can't talk too much, but you know, you can you can continue to let him know who made it first. So, see if I had a brother, I would I would I'd make that. Uh, you know, whatever. Um, so, uh, Corbin. Okay. So obviously, it's a dream come true for you and Caleb. Uh, you know, to to play in the big leagues together, and and uh, you know, we've heard many stories about how you guys were so excited and it was amazing. But but can you tell me about how your par- like what it means to your parents right um for this to happen uh obviously a proud day in the joseph household absolutely i mean it was uh it was a day where i, I think they were just in in shock as as much as, as we were you know and the uh the idea of you know me being up there and and just the the rarity of you know i got called up and he wasn't there you know and then all of a sudden he gets called up you know just uh just a crazy you know week of uh of events but uh you know just what what an awesome experience they both got to to see us in the same uniform on the same field which is you know i'm I'm sure just a you know a blessing that you know not a lot of brothers can can say so it was uh and uh you know for the for our family in general i mean it's it's just something that i'm sure it's just out of out of their wildest dreams that it it actually came true what's your favorite non-baseball activity to do with your brother uh you know i i enjoy golfing with him you know he's actually a pretty good golfer and I'm not very good but he actually helps me you know learn how to hit the ball straight so once I start you know keying in on hitting the ball straight it's a lot of fun you know we do an annual golf tournament every year with my granddad and my cousin and my brother and you know all of us are really close so you know that's something I always look forward to right at the end of the season you know late October to uh to get back out on the golf course and uh you know compete for their, that little uh that little tournament so we're wrapping up here with Corbin Joseph. Corbin, you, you once said when you were on Harrisburg, you once said, uh, quote, it was, really cool to, it was a really cool experience to be the older guy trying to help be a leader in the clubhouse. I never had that opportunity until last year. Uh, I tried to help these guys any way I could. Okay. Is, uh, is coaching something you'd be interested in? Yeah, I, I'm, I think so. Um, you know, I'm kind of torn in between right now just because, you know, when as a player you, you want to put everything you got into the season. And, uh, you know, I, I think that, you know, helping these young kids, I'm starting to, you know, understand that that coaching or, or teaching and the 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 information that you get throughout a career. I mean, it, it could it could change somebody else's career, jumpstart somebody else's career. Um, and uh, you know, I, I've thought about it, and uh, it it definitely is an option. 
Last question here with Corbin Joseph. Corbin, thank you so much for your time. Corbin, you were drafted by the Yankees. You now play for the Orioles. All right. How juiced would you feel to step into the box versus the team that drafted you? Yeah, it would. It would be. Uh, it'd be a lot of fun. You know, it. I. I, I think you know with with the Yankees. Um, you know, I and and don't get me wrong. Like I, I am forever grateful for them. Just give give me an opportunity, and uh, you know, there's no grudges against against the them or the the uh, coaching staff there. I mean, that I have so much respect for them. Um, but you know, if we if we're head to head battle, you know, I I'm gonna give it everything we I've got to win because you know I want. And I think everybody wants to to say, yeah, you know, we beat the Yankees. You know, I mean, they're their heads they're held on such a high pedestal. They've got great players, and um, you know, definitely be be competing at top notch. Corbin Joseph, second baseman for the Bowie Bay Sox. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you so much to Corbin Joseph for his time to talk about his Tennessee roots, playing with his brother in the big leagues, his vast experience in baseball with over a thousand games played in the minors. Corbin's killing it right now. He's got 15 homers. He's hitting 314. He walks more and he strikes out. He's got a 505 slugging. That is his career best uh, with Bowie right now. 4.9% swing strike percentage is nothing to sniff at. Uh, right now at the second base position, the Orioles are not necessarily getting uh, league average, if you will, offensive production. So you could possibly see Corbin there sooner than later. Corbin's playing a bunch of second base as well as first base and DH with the Bay Sox this season. So stay tuned to that situation. Uh, moving on here in the Hot Stove Cast, Adam Pohl, broadcaster for the Bowie Bay Sox, stops by to talk about the Bay Sox, Prince George's Stadium, and why the Bay Sox are the number one team in the Czech Republic. Joining the Hot Stove cast is the broadcaster for the AA Bowie Bay Sox, Adam Pohl. Adam, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thanks, Zach. Thanks for having me. Great to have you on the show. Adam, uh, let's dive right into it. I understand, before we get into the nitty-gritty here, I understand that the Bowie Bay Sox are the number one team of the Czech Republic. Please tell me more about this. <laughs> okay. Well, this winter, I, I, I thought it was pretty funny. Uh, the Erie Seawolves, God, what country was it? Uh, they, they got into it with an English... A podcast about baseball or show, and the the English show then said that the Erie Seawolves were of the English baseball community, the official minor league baseball team of the Seawolves. Okay. So I thought it was funny because you know we wear orange, so I I went with the Netherlands, right? So I said, oh, the Netherlands are the Bay Sox, and I and I we we put out on social media, you know, pictures of like. Uh, people from Holland uh, basically celebrating big World Cup victories, saying that it was the Bay Sox championship parade picture from 2015. Little did we know the Orioles were going to sign uh, one of the best European baseball players uh, in the Rule 5 minor league draft. He was in the Triple A phase of the Rule 5 draft. And his name's Martin Cervenka. And Cervenka is a 26 year old catcher uh, who's really blossomed the second half of this year. He was the Eastern League Player of the Month in July. And uh, he was also the Orioles Minor League Player of the Month of July. I wouldn't be surprised if he's in the big leagues next year with Baltimore. And he is the first ever player from Prague. And of course, Prague is the, the largest city and I believe the capital of the Czech Republic. And he is the largest city for, or uh, the first player ever from Prague to reach Double A. So, uh, so how about that? So we, you know, my joke about Holland. All of a sudden, now uh, we're getting followed by a lot of those little club teams uh, that that are playing baseball, which is obviously a not very played game in the Czech Republic. And uh, we are now the official uh, Eastern League team of the Czech Republic. But you know, I, I asked Martin. I said, Martin, you know, are, are are, are you like a, a star at home? I mean, you're the first player ever from Double A to to make it, and, and <laughs> you know here here to uh, to this level of baseball from from Prague. And he he said, Ada. He goes, well, my my family thinks I'm a star. <laughs> like like he he is completely unknown in the Czech Republic. I don't even know if they know. Do they even have baseball in the Czech Republic? But exactly. N- nonetheless, Prague. Oh my goodness, Prague is Prague is amazing. I've always wanted to go there. But anyway, let's let's, <laughs> let's keep talking Bay Sox with Adam Pohl, the broadcaster for the Bay Sox. Um, Adam, the season's winding down. Uh, which players on Bowie should fans uh, have their eyes on? Well, to be honest, uh, I you know when you go to a Double A ball game, you have to realize that almost half the players you see in a game will play in a major league game. Uh, to be honest, some of them have already played in a major league game and are on their way down. But but the reality of it is is that you're seeing a, a it's it's a very high level of baseball. 
And with the Orioles making these uh, trades and going into a rebuild this season after a very disappointing start to the year, it, it's really remarkable. The Orioles got 15 players uh, in their trades for, for former Bay Sox grades like Manny Machado and Jonathan Scope and Kevin Gossman. And with that, of those 15 players right now, uh, seven of them, so basically half of them are on the Bay Sox. And it's pretty remarkable, but... Um, I think there's a lot of excitement for those players. Uh, many feel like the Orioles have two of the top 100 players in the minor leagues right now. Both those players are on Bowie. Um, a third baseman named Ryan Mountcastle came up through the Orioles organization. He's got an outstanding bat. Everybody's worried with Mountcastle about where he will play. But to me, defensively, I mean, but, but to me, it, he can play anywhere. You know, it, it's, his bat is is going to be at a level more than likely where he could be a very good first baseman that hits for big power uh, in the American League East. He's only 21 years old. Everyone is always thinking about right now, but it's sometimes with these minor league players, you have to think about three or four years down the road. And my guess is in three or four years, the Orioles, you know, uh, a lot of the players that, that you're seeing play for Baltimore now uh, are probably going to be onto their, their, you know, next team or, or next path. So, so a guy like Mountcastle, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he's a first baseman or of the future for Baltimore. Um, or, I mean, I mean, uh, obviously he, he, he could be an outfielder. He, I mean, he's played some third base here in Bowie, of course, too. The other guy is Yusnail Diaz, who is Cuban, right. and uh, he was the main player in the Manny Machado deal. And uh, so Diaz, I think he's got a great arm. He's got speed. His father was actually a sprinter in Cuba. And um, you can tell. I mean, he, he, he can get up to full speed very quickly. So he's an exciting prospect. Um, you want to see more consistency with the bat as far as the ability to drive the ball consistently. He hasn't had a great start in Bowie, per se. But when you look at his double-A numbers career over two seasons, uh, this guy's only 21 years old. And he's, he's, a, he's a guy that's an above 400 on, bris, on base percentage in double-A. So he's really an exciting ball player. But, I mean, the, right now the Bay Sox, this 2018 team, even though uh, we're not winning the division, you know, it doesn't look like we're, we're on our way to an Eastern League championship, per se. Um, we might have more Major League players this year than in almost any year in team history. You mentioned a couple sterling prospects in the Orioles system. Um, look, I'm very excited, actually, to get a look at Diaz tonight. Yeah. Um, you see a lot of Eastern League baseball. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any player uh, that you've seen in the Eastern League and just said to yourself, wow, that guy is just going to be a superstar? Do you mean this year? Yes. You know, I, 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 I mean, I, we had Vladimir Guerrero Jr. in this league for a long time, so he's the guy. Um, and But we never faced him. He got hurt like three or four days before Bowie. I, I really think um, on New Hampshire, because we just saw them, so it comes to mind right away. Th this kid, Bo Bichette, is really, really good. He's 20 years old. He's a shortstop, but he's got very quick feet. And he's, he hit about 500 in two series against the Bay Sox. But I just think that Bo Bichette is, is an exciting young player. I, he looks like a scrappy guy that's going to be a fun guy to watch. Um, and then, uh, boy, I mean, there's just there, – there really are, obviously, every team has a lot of guys throughout the league that, that are going to be impact players uh, in the major leagues. It always seems like in this league, Akron and Trenton, the Indians and Yankees, have a, a lot of depth in pitching. Um, Trenton has a starter, really tall, lean kid named Tristan McKenzie uh, that's been fun to watch this year. Um, but, uh, but all in all, I, I think you can make a, a great argument that this league – being uh, throughout the Northeast so much in the Mid-Atlantic that loves baseball so much and, and being at double-A, it might be the best league in all of minor league baseball. I agree 100%. Uh, double-A is where the prospects are, you know, the 21, right. 23, 22-year-old guys. Uh, bringing it back to the Bay Sox. Sure. Here speaking with Adam Pohl, broadcaster for the double-A Bowie Bay Sox, the Orioles affiliate. Um, for the fans in Bowie, yeah. uh, what, what promo should fans look forward to as the season winds down? Well, we've got, we're fortunate to have the final two weekends at home, and uh, the last weekend of August has one of our great promotions, which is a Saturday night promotion. We're, we're a very kids-centric ballpark, and we've got a touch-a-truck promotion. So you come in the few hours before that game, I think that night's a 6.35 game, so I think it starts at 4 or 4.30, and there will just be... You know, fire trucks and different vehicles of all natures around the ballpark, and it's it's a really really fun kids event. And then the following weekend's Labor Day weekend. If you're in town, 
Um, Labor Day weekend is our big fan appreciation weekend. So, boy, so many raffles, free giveaways. You can win a lot of stuff by going to a ball game that final weekend. So it'll, it'll be a lot of fun, and I think we're fortunate to finish at home. It, it it's, it's a good way to close things out, and uh, we'll see. Who knows? I mean, we're down, as we talk, with about three weeks to go, we're down by a, by a decent chunk of games, but the team we're chasing, Altoona, is the team we'll face that last weekend. So the Bay Sox get hot these next few weeks. There's a chance that we might be able to uh, get back into the thick of it here. You never know. Uh, last question here with Adam Paul, broadcaster for the Bowie Bay Sox. Adam, uh, for fans who have never been to Prince George's Stadium, mm-hmm. uh, what would you tell them to get, to, to get them to go down to Bowie? Oh, that's a good. That's a good question. Uh, you know, Prince George's Stadium. Uh, I would just say, obviously, in a general sense, affordable family fun is, is a great way to put it. But um, but we're kind of a unique ball club because we're in a very major league market, uh, but we're obviously minor league baseball. So obviously. It's going to be cheaper to come to a Bay Sox game. You're going to be able to sit closer. Um, you're going to be able to enjoy a lot of amenities that Major League Stadiums don't have. For instance, we have a carousel. Um, but uh, uh, f- a great fireworks shows on weekends. Um, it- it's just a, it's a great place to watch a ball game. And, you know, I think that there's also something special about minor league baseball in general. And uh, there's that feeling of like, my goodness, I saw this band that's playing in the big stadiums and I saw them at this small club, <laughs> you know? There's that feel to it. I, I, I feel like with, uh, with a lot of our ball players, uh, you know, you're looking right now at a 25-man roster where I would be stunned if 12 to 15 of our 25 right now don't play in a major league ball game in the future. So uh, especially with the Orioles right now, um, there's a lot of excitement in what is in the system. The Orioles are looking to build from within. It's going to take more than just the guys that are here right now. It's going to take a few more drafts and things of that nature and a few years for these guys to develop to become good major league players. But, boy, I mean, if you are a, a, an Orioles fan, um, a lot of people would say you'd be more excited to see, uh, you know, a, a guy, this Bowie Bay Sox team play right now because of how many of these fresh faces that are in the organization are here to say, OK, we, we traded away, you know, the last generation of Orioles baseball, which was a, a great, you know, five year run. But 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 who do we have now? They're, they're in Bowie. So let, let's go see them. Adam Pohl, broadcaster for the Bowie Bay Sox. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, most definitely. Thank you, Zach. I appreciate Adam for his time. That was a blast talking Bay Sox, Miners, and, and why the team is the number one team in the Czech Republic. That's so bizarre. But, hey, there's always a story in your backyard. Just go find it. Nonetheless, moving on here in the Hot Stove Cast to a segment I like to call What's Cooking, where I talk about the week's current events. And I trust me, trust me, this one's a good one. Eat your tots. I'll have what she's having. Ronald Acuna Jr. was looking to Homer in his sixth consecutive game. Okay, his what would be his fourth consecutive game with a leadoff home run. Uh, six consecutive games with a home run. Keep that number in mind. Okay, but what happened was, as you, I'm sure you've heard by now, Jose Urania threw one pitch. It was a 97 mile an hour fastball that tailed in on him. Popped him in the elbow. Uh, Acuna leaves the game, and Urena is tossed, uh, as well as Brian Snitker, Braves manager, uh, who, of course, was sticking up for his star player, who is on an absolute tear right now, by the way. Uh, Ronald Acuna, I hyped him up pretty substantially this time last year, as well as a little bit before that. Uh, it's good to see him come to fruition. Uh, but back to this subject, Ronald Acuna is actually back in the lineup tonight, so tip of the cap to him. But I bring this up because, by the way, there's a three-way tie for most uh, consecutive games with a home run in Major League Baseball, and you'll never guess who's on the list. Ken Griffey Jr., Dale Long, and current Miami Marlins manager, Don Mattingly. <laughs> so, wow. I-, I mean, really? Really? Seriously? Okay, this is classless. I hate the move. I, I-, I do not get the old-timers that say, oh... Yeah, no, you got to do this. This is this is making the game right. Yeah, this this is checks and balances. No, this is ridiculous. This is childish. It's how how dare you? In, in a game that where the average viewership is 53 years old. That's like 
massively older than the other sports. NBA is 37, football and hockey are in the in the low to earlier 40s. Okay, you cannot cannot even flirt with the jeopardization of the future of the game. And Acuna, make no mistake, is one of the best prospects uh, to call him. A, Prospect, I'm not, I can't call him a prospect, but he's one of the best budding young stars in baseball, okay? You cannot do this, okay? The Marlins are 22 games back uh, of the Braves, who are currently in first place, and it's a classless move. I absolutely hate it. And I mentioned those people who were like, oh, yeah, no, checks and balances. You got you to gotta, you gotta have this happen. This needed to happen. Well, the Mets broadcaster, who I, who I normally like on a, on a good day, I'm not going to name him, but he had an absolutely awful take on this. Awful, awful take. Uh, quote, he's killing the ball the last three games. He's hit three home runs. You got to hit him, end quote. No, go pound sand in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights, and when you come back, rid yourself of these garbage dated takes. Brandon Nimmo has nine hits in his last 12 at-bats. By this phony logic, he should, be, he should take 97 to the ribs, right? I'm sure this broadcaster would be perfectly okay with that, based on this logic. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, let's move on here. Mookie Betts hit for the cycle this week, uh, August 10th, which I- I'm frankly uh, sure this will not be his last. He's so talented, honestly. He could hit two more. I would not even be slightly surprised. Moving on to another amazing baseball feat. How about Oakland Athletics outfielder Ramon Lariano with the throw of the year, throwing from the warning track in left center all the way to first base to throw out the runner, uh, on the fly, I believe they measured it 314 feet, which, good lord, oh my goodness. And it was a missile. It was like right on target, too. I mean, I don't know if he could do that throw again if he tried. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. He probably could. But the A's, man, wow. They were like a game behind the Astros. They could win the division right now. The Astros are sputtering. Uh, I'm Next week, I'm going to get to the Cy Youngs, the MVPs, the Rookies of the Years, the divisions, the playoff races. All that, so stay tuned for next week. But I want to move on here uh, to the Hartford Yard Goat Stadium, Dunkin' Donuts Park, where, by the way, thank you to Jeff Dooley and Dan Lavallo for accommodating me at uh, Dunkin' Donuts Stadium. Really appreciate that. But it's an amazing, amazing ballpark, people. You have to, seriously, it is worth the trip. And not only is it worth the trip, I mentioned this, I think I mentioned this before. If I didn't, whatever. The st- the stadium food of Bears smokehouse barbecue okay is worth the trip to the stadium alone it is that special it's so fantastically great okay i will speak more about uh dunkin donuts park after my interview ballpark chowdown comes up with an interview with bear smokehouse barbecue right here royale with you royale with you there's been a mistake. You've accidentally given me the food that my food eats. Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. Ballpark Chowdown is in Hartford, Connecticut, the home of the Hartford Yard Goats, a.k.a. the Rockies AA affiliate. I'm here with Jesse, the owner of Barbecue Smokehouse, Bears Barbecue Smokehouse, rather. Jesse, how you doing? I don't know if you're the owner, by the way. I know you- <laughs> I'm not the owner, but I am privileged to work for the owner. Um... Yeah, we're Bears over here, uh, second year, Yargo Stadium, Dunkin' Donuts Park. Um, you know, we've become a staple here in, in this park. People know definitely to come see us for some great tasting barbecue. Uh, St. Louis style, uh, sorry, Kansas City style originally. Oh, yeah. But it's definitely taking a uh, northeast twist to it, so. It's, it's, it's so great. Now, it's a weird day. It's a doubleheader. There's some rain. Like, literally, they called the game already, but I'm here. I already had something called the Mac Attack, where it's mac and cheese, and it's got brisket on top, and it's so good. Like, the brisket meat is, is tender. It's, it's, like, juicy and soft. And then the mac and cheese really brings it home because it's, like, thick, like, uh, braids of macaroni, if you will. And uh, it's cheesy. It's got a little flour in it. You can tell it's, like, got that thickness. Oh, it's so good. Um, so I already had that. It li- honest to God, honest to God, this <laughs> this stand is literally worth coming here alone. Like it's so good. Um, get the Mac Attack. Um, oh my goodness! And and you finish it off with some with some uh, sauce. I forget what spice. I had a, I had a, a Texas spice, right? Yeah, the Texas pepper. So we have three of our four sauces here in the stadium. We have our Kansas City Sweet, which is the most popular one. Yes. And we have the Texas pepper, which is a black pepper base. 
um, still kind of borderline mild. And then we have the Ghost Grizzly, which is the fire. Oh, I missed out on the Ghost Grizzly. Yeah. I got I to gotta give that a shot next time. Uh, but yeah, I mixed some uh, Texas pepper and the Kansas City sweet, you said? That's my style, yeah? Yeah, I, I, I think you told me to do that. Or, yes, one of the guys told me to. And it's, oh, it's good. It's so good. Uh, it brings it all home. But they were kind enough to hook me up with something called, the, they have cracklings, which yeah. are like, what are, what are cracklings, Jesse? So cracklings are what we were come to know as uh, pork rinds more up here in the north. Uh, so what we do is we deep fry them in the restaurant and then we uh, dust them with our beef rub. Um, become a staple here as well at, at Yargo Stadium. People know to come and get the cracklings when they come get in line. Only only uh, five bucks for the cracklings, you know. Alright, here we go. I'm just going to give one a quick bite, see what happens. Oh my. That spice is good. It like, what would you say it was? So it's our beef rub. I wish I could tell you what's in our beef rub, but very few people in this planet know what's actually in the beef rub mix, um, being the owners. So we keep it ex exclusive for that purpose. Alone. Now, wrapping up here on Ballpark Showdown in, in Hartford, Connecticut, we got Bears Barbecue, uh, Smokehouse Barbecue, rather. Uh, Bears Smokehouse Barbecue. Jesse, I hear you guys are like a staple in the community, actually. Like, you've been here a long time, many years. Tell me about the business. Tell me about what's going on in Hartford. So, we do, we do a lot for the community and uh, various events over the course of the year. Um, you know, we're just happy to be here. It's a, it's a great community, and we just want to give back to the people, you know, that come and support us. And I'll be honest with you, I see a lot of regulars here, you know, what I would consider regular, you know, and, and they give me shout outs and I recognize them. And I see them in different various events that we have. Um, and I always thank them for their continued support. Um, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be here. Where can, uh, where can Hartford local Yard of Goats fans find you in the city? So we're at 25 Front Street here in downtown Hartford. We have three locations, 25 Front Street in Hartford. Uh, we have our South Windsor location, which is on Ellington Road. And then we have our... Windsor Locks uh, restaurant, which is right close to the airport at 2052 Paquanic Avenue in Windsor Locks. Okay, and last but not least, Jesse, first of all, thank you so much for your time. My appreciation. And where can fans find you guys on social media? So you can come check us out. Uh, we have a Twitter account. I don't have Twitter, unfortunately, so I couldn't tell you what it is. Um, and we definitely have a Facebook page to all our restaurants, um, Chango Rosa and The Blind Pig. Uh, we definitely... Uh, Ventured, have ventured off, and so we're looking to continue to put out great food for uh, you know the world. Yes, sir. Oh, I can't wait to come back, uh, Jesse. Thank you so much for your time. Bears Barbecue Smokehouse. My pleasure. Bears Smokehouse Barbecue. I'm getting that right. Bears Smokehouse Barbecue, man. Mm, 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 mm. The best ballpark food I've had. Uh, I, oof, it's you're gonna be hard pressed to top that. You're gonna have to like really. Turn over some stones to find some hidden hidden gems in minor league baseball to find better food than that. Uh, and I've consistently found that the ballpark food from the local vendors is, or you know, the local eateries is the best food at the park. Uh, as Jesse mentioned, they have three locations throughout Hartford. Uh, thank you so much to Jesse and Bear Smokehouse Barbecue for having me. That was oh, that was lit quite literally a treat. Um, but let's get into Dunkin' Donuts Park real fast uh, as I wrap up this episode of the Hot Stove Cast. Dunkin' Donuts Park, man. It's so awesome. Okay, it opened in 2017. Uh, it's brand, brand, brand new. Uh, and while to stick on the subject of food, uh, it was a special occasion the other night, but they literally had a donut chicken nugget skewer, right? Which some people would think is barbaric. I, You know, it's the miners. Eat what you want. You have a good time. It's stadium food. They put... Like whatever donut you want, basically on a skewer with chicken nuggets, and I guess you put some ketchup on there to keep that sweetness going. And oh my, I didn't have it. I really wanted it. Uh, I was just busy doing stuff around the park, taking pictures, interviews, etc. Uh, but wow, oh, it looks so good. They also have a donut burger, uh, where they of course put a burger in between uh, two donuts, um, an all American classic. Um, and the chicken tenders I hear are fantastic. Uh, but really, this Bear Smokehouse Barbecue brings it home. Um, and, uh, oh, man. They had, again, they, they have kind of, it's a revolving door of, of uh, and I mean that in a good way, of local eateries come through. So they had this place called Famous Ted's come in, and, and they were the steam, the Hartford Yard Goats were the steam cheeseburgers for that game that night. And the first game of that doubleheader that eventually got rained out. So the whole thing was rained out. 
But the steamed cheeseburgers, they ran out. They sold out of steamed cheeseburgers. They sold f- over 500 of them, from what I gather. And people paid nine bucks for a steamed cheeseburger. I don't. I, I struggle to understand. I didn't have one myself. Uh, I had the barbecue, obviously. Uh, but this line of people was over 50 people for a cheeseburger. Are you kidding me? Unbelievable. Um, so yeah, the food. You know, they have your standard Dippin' Dots and and stuff, and and uh, ice cream is. Oh man, it all it looked fantastic. Um, but enough of the food, though. The yard goats. They actually have a pen full of yard goats, or goats rather, in center field where you can go play with the goats. Uh, I did that, and uh, Mary was kind enough to let me in and play with them. That was so much fun. Uh, I actually, it's on my Twitter at Hot Stove Cast. Go check it out. It's also on my Facebook page, uh, Hot Stove Cast. You can see me playing around with some goats. Uh, um, <laughs> it was a total blast. I never expected that's where this would go, but here we are. Um, oh my goodness, they are adorable. They had like, she had a five-year-old goat, she had a two-year-old goat, and she had two, like, two-and-a-half-month-year-old goats, and I held the two-and-a-half-year, uh, two-and-a-half-month, uh, uh, year old, two-and-a-half-month-old goats, rather, and, oh, dude, <laughs> that was amazing. Uh, so go check out the goats, um, and even the stadium itself, it's very modern, it's new, it's got a 360 concourse, which, as you know, is my favorite, uh, I don't even think you're doing a stadium if you don't have a 360 concourse, you know, you, that's a little unfair, but seriously, that's the best way to go about it, uh, the sight line's pretty good, um, and it's just an all-around fun experience, uh, affordable family fun, get on out to the Hartford Yard Goods Dunkin' Donuts Park, uh, for an experience you will not regret, and hit up Bear's Smokehouse Barbecue in left field, uh, oh my goodness, it's so good, by the way, I showed up there for the for the chow down, and I was like, "Do you have time to do an interview?" And I was like, "Yeah, you look kind of busy. Uh, I'll come back later." And the line was like twelve people, maybe fifteen people. They're like, "No, nah, this is nothing. We should do it now." So because they were busy, the guy wanted to do it after the game. It's fine or at a, at a later time, but nonetheless, apparently they get lines of twenty five, thirty people, maybe even more, uh, which is not even mildly surprising. That's honestly. Among the best macaroni and cheese I've ever had. Seriously, people, you are going to be scraping the bottom of the paper tray to get that cheese off. It's that good. Um, but that wraps things up here on Hot Stove Cast, episode 12, 112. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you to Jeff Dooley, Dan Lavallo, Adam Pohl, Corbin Joseph, and company for accommodating me uh, this past weekend. Oh, it was so much fun. Uh, get on out to Dunkin' Donuts Park. Keep listening to the Hot Stove Cast. There are, there are more episodes uh, in the back. You can listen to my interviews. are fun. They're different. I highly encourage you to listen to those. Um, and I try to keep all my segments, you know, evergreen, stuff you can go back to and enjoy. So head on back there. Uh, next week, I, like I said, I'll talk about the award season coming up. The playoff picture is, is taking shape right now. I'll talk about that. I have an amazing interview lined up next week. Really enjoyed it doing that interview. I will not say who it is, but I promise you it was a fun one. He came up with an idea to innovate minor league buses and how they can be more effective as far as sleeping goes. And it was incredible. I mean, I got to tip my cap to the guy. I literally joked with him. I may have to not interview or may have to not inter- uh, air the interview because it's such a fantastic idea. But please subscribe to my YouTube channel right below. Hit the red button. Subscribe on iTunes. If you're on Overwatch or any other platform, thanks for listening. Hit subscribe there as well. Um, follow me on social media at Hot Stove Cast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, there's more to come. Thank you so much. Like I said, with the podcast uh, outlets, the show is expanding. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll talk to you next week. You got Hollywood's highest honor. Shared credit, no money.